In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. We gather celebrating sacred mysteries and knowing the incredible love and blessings of our God. Let us ask forgiveness as we celebrate this memorial of St. Monica. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son Augustine, grant us through the intercession of them both, that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of, our, of your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Happy the husband of a really good wife. The number of his days will be doubled. A perfect wife is the joy of her husband. He will live out the years of his life in peace. A good wife is the best of portions, reserved for those who fear the Lord. Rich or poor, they will be glad of heart, cheerful of face, whatever the season. The grace of a wife will charm her husband. Her accomplishment will make him stronger. A silent wife is a gift from the Lord. No price can be put on a well-trained character. A modest wife is a boon twice over. A chaste character cannot be weighed on scales. Like the sun rising over the mountain of the Lord is the beauty of a good wife in a well-kept house. The word of the Lord. Keep my soul in peace before you, O Lord. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. Truly, I have set my soul in silence and peace. A weaned child on his mother's breast, even so is my soul. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia, allelu, allelu, allelu. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. 
Jesus went to a town called Nain, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people. And when he was near the gate of the town, it happened that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of, a, of his mother. And she was a widow. And a, consid a considerable number of the town's people were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her. Do not cry, he said. And then he went up, and he put his hand on the bear, and the bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I tell you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Everyone was filled with awe and praised God, saying, a great prophet has appeared amongst us. God has visited his people. And this opinion of him spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, somebody said to me that, you know, they remember that in, an, in August time, the, one of the rituals that we used to do long ago is in August time, you would, your mother would give you a purge. You remember that? Yeah. You prepare you for the next term coming. Get all the badness out to prepare you for what you have to go to now to learn. And they said to me that they, they felt that yesterday's readings and the homily was like a purge to prepare us for what God has in store for us coming. And in, in, in that sense, it's an interesting image because it is Holy Mother Church that prepared the purge with those seven woes that we've had over the last few days that really are a, a relentless look at how bad religion can get to prepare us now for a new feast, St. Monica, who herself is an image of motherhood and who many, like Henry de Lubac, has seen as an image of the motherhood of the church. St. Monica, you know, is, is one of these incredible women in our church whose power and authority is second to none. So we all know about St. Augustine and what he's contributed, but he, he, what he's contributed is all due to her. As a, as a young man, Augustine got into one of these heretical set, sects, Manichaeism, which is all kind of strange beliefs about, about the body being evil and about this and that and the other, and the world being divided with a good God and a bad God. And he, so he had all of these heretical beliefs. And, and St. Monica, when she could take it no more, she excommunicated Augustine from her house. And she said to him, as long as you are going to be into these strange beliefs, you cannot come back to my house, you cannot dine at my table, and you cannot eat or, or sup or, or have communion with me. And she put him out. Well, you know, the church reflects on Monica's action to Augustine as motherly love, eh? as motherly love. Because there are times when a mother's love needs to be tough. And there are times when a mother's love needs to be mercy. And to know the difference is really so difficult. But it is that shock of Monica putting him out. Because one thing he knew was that his mother loved him. But it is that shock of Monica putting him out of her house and breaking communion with him, of excommunicating him, that, that forced Augustine to reflect again on his actions. And though, although he left his hometown and went far away, he, he was then chastened and, and also disturbed by the actions of his mother because he knew how much his mother loved him. He knew that. You know, Holy Mother Church too sometimes has to take a strong stand. And Holy Mother Church too has to chasten because of love. And one of the things that 
in our time, and you know we've been talking about domestic church long enough, huh? but, but Monica is giving us an incredible image of, of what it is to be a domestic church and, and how domestic church works well. Because in her tough love, she never in, enabled Augustine in his stupidity. She never enabled him and said, well, son, you know, he's my son, and well, whatever is whatever. She, she loved him enough to love him for the sake of his soul and his salvation above his worldly or earthly consolation that he would have given to her as a mother. Now, that's, that's language that's real hard to hear these days, you know, because we tend in our time to, to take the consolation of the child is our child and, and deal with it from, from that perspective. But do we really love our child sufficient to risk all for the sake of salvation? And that's what we see in, in St. Monica. She risked all for the sake of salvation. But she didn't put him out and leave him there. St. Augustine himself will reflect that the blood flowing in her heart flowed through her eyes on and watered her face constantly on my behalf. That, that Monica prayed to God with tears, with supplication, with, with a contrite heart, with, with deep emotion, with deep fervor. She prayed night and day for the salvation of her son and she did not relent until he came home to God and came home to, to being a Christian. She did not relent. And, and so this is the other side of the mother now. And this is the other side of Holy Mother Church. Because she, she could be both hard in her judgment because she wants all of her children to come to eternal life. But she is also compassionate and passionate about her children. And she will weep day and night for the sake of her child so that one child will come back to know Jesus and, and come back to her bosom and come back to the table of the Lord and come back to live fully the life of grace. And, and this is how Holy Mother Church should, should be. Now, we're saying that the domestic church and the big church are deeply interconnected, then we have to say that St. Monica is now a prototype for both the domestic church and the big church. And she stands as a witness against both because her love for her, her son was so profound and so deep that she knew no barriers to be able to bring him back to the table of the Lord and back to the bosom of the church and back to the, to the wellspring of salvation. Her tears are legendary, and that's why we see in our gospel today chosen for this feast, we see that text of the, of the widow who lost her son. And that's the best image of, of, of Augustine. Because all, although Monica had, had three children, she wept over Augustine as if he had physically died and been separated and did not relent until such time as God gave her a sign. And it was in a dream that she had where she saw a young man and the young man bid her to come to him and she realized that, that the young man was going towards salvation. And she left her home then and she went to find her, her son Augustine in a far off country and traveled over sea and over land to find him. And having found him, after praying for much time, this is about 16 years, after praying for much time, with tears flowing from her heart, he says in one occasion in, in his famous letters, the, the Confessions, he says, from the tears, from the water flowing down my mother's face, I, I received the waters of the church in baptism and were welcomed into the bosom of my mother church. Isn't that a beautiful image? That the tears of his mother become the baptismal water that brought him into his real mother, the church, and into her bosom. And, and it's clear from the, from the text of the confessions that Augustine is, is not seeing 
Monica, his mother, simply as his earthly mother, but he's seeing Monica, Saint Monica, as his spiritual mother. And, and not only did she bring him into birth, she brought him into rebirth. And in another passage, he, he says that the pangs of childbirth were nothing in comparison to the pangs that she experienced for my spiritual rebirth. And, and, and he understood that, that his physical birth, as painful as that was, was nothing in comparison to the pain that she endured for those long years for his spiritual rebirth. And it is that spiritual rebirth that he is most happy with because of her. So Monica is an incredible woman. And, and because she chose to not give up on her son, but prayed for him with long tears day and night. Not only does he become a Christian, he becomes a priest, he becomes a bishop, he becomes a saint, she becomes a saint. Now, isn't that a wonderful image for domestic church and for big church? Maybe the challenge that we're facing when we see our children going in directions that we don't like, maybe we're not understanding the role of Monica in our church. The role of the, the mother whose pathos is, is so profound that, that she will be relentless before God on behalf of that child until that child returns to the bosom of God, to the table of the family and to the table of the Eucharist. And, and that's what St. Monica offers us as both domestic church and big church, that both the big church and the domestic church needs to have far more concern for those who have gone astray, far more care for those who have left the path, far more love for those who have, have gone away. And that love needs to be both tough love and mercy at the same time. And that's what St. Monica displays over the love of her, her son. There's a beautiful and a very moving passage in the Confessions of St. Augustine around St. Monica. When she had come to Augustine, she had brought not only him, but his friends into baptism and into faith and nurtured them in faith through her own witness. And, and he says, you know, it was clear to us all that she had no care for this world whatsoever and that her heart and her mind and her life was set on eternity. And when after he was converted, they were now returning home and they were in a port city waiting on a ship to, to cross the seas, she realizes that she's not well and she's becoming more and more ill. And she says to him, you know, well, it's him and his brother. She says, you might bury me in this place. And the brother says, no, no, mom, you can't bury you here. Hold on a while. It's so much better if we can bury you in your own hometown. It would be so much, so much better. And, and she scolds the brother. And she says, you see, you see, he has no care for God or for me. What does it matter to me where you bury me now? All I have come to do in this life is now complete. All I needed to do was to see you back in the folds of God. And now that you are in God's hands, there is nothing more for me to do in this earth. Where I die, there you bury me. Wow. Wow. Now that is, that is faith. That is incredible faith. The, the summation of a person's life is how they die. Eh? Because if all during our life we are, we are letting go into God's hands, if all during our life we are, we are bending our will to God's will, if all during our life we are willing to put God's will before our will, then when we come to the moment of our death, we will also be able to put God's will before our will and we'll be able to hand our life over to God and we would have no care at all for this world. And we would look steadily then, straight at God in heaven, and believe with all of our might that it is God who brought us into this world, and it is God who takes us out. And it is into his hands that we go. And therefore, we must go with haste and do not delay at all. And that's incredible faith that St. Monica displays. So in her death, she witnesses to the depth of her faith. And, and St. Augustine says, you know, 
St. Monica and himself in those days spoke about the glories of God and the things of heaven. And it brought great joy and consolation to both their souls. And, and, and that's an incredible joy again. That, that at that time that she, looking di direct at heaven, continued to minister to him and to tell him what was most important. That what was most important was not him or earth or earthly life or her body, or where she should be put to rest. But she was communicating the, the incredible joy of heaven and what heaven should be and how heaven should be. So let us now recognize in this incredible woman, this woman of grace, this woman of incredible stature, the ways in which our domestic church and our big church have now a mother in heaven praying and interceding on our behalf, a patroness, praying on our behalf and let us go to her that we might have the wisdom to know how to bring our children back to Christ back to his table and back to the bosom of the church amen let us pray father we thank you for your incredible love for us and we thank you for this memorial of Saint Monica we pray O oh Lord that you may open wide our heart to all that you want for us and teach us, Lord, your will, and teach us your way, that as we, your children, seek you with all our heart, that you may allow us to be found and allow us to find you, our God and Savior. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our Holy Father that you may strengthen him in his ministry, and we pray for all the bishops and priests, the religious, and the whole people of God, that we may be faithful to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the many families that grieve over the loss of their children, both grieving physically because they have died, but also grieving spiritually because they no longer see the value of faith and no longer see the value of living as a Christian. We pray, O oh God, that that grief rising up to you in heaven would stir souls of children this day and with the intercession of St. Monica that they may be stirred to faith again and to respond to you again. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the many, many mothers who have cried day and night on behalf of their children, their family, and their loved ones, we pray, O oh God, you give them courage. And, let, and hear the cries of their heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the many who have placed their petitions in our prayer boxes. And we ask, Lord, that you bless them this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring our prayer to the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant we pray that as we bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate, bless Monica, humbly entreating 
that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he enjoyed his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. O oh Lord, and profess, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate in the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father what art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your service. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. 
the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Today, let us give thanks to the many mothers who have prayed and prayed ceaselessly for us to have faith. Those prayer warriors at night and day rolling beads on their knees in supplication interceded on our behalf that we would have faith. Let us remember today the many who have not only interceded but cried with long tears for us to know him fully and love him fully and to experience that joy of us coming back to him and knowing him. Let us bring them to God today and those who still pray waiting in hope for God to answer their prayer. Those who still cry day and night and grieve because their children are not at the banquet table with them and with Christ. Today let us ask God's blessings and mercies upon them. And ourselves let us give thanks for them and what they have been in our life in holding us before God night and day. And today as we make a spiritual communion, let us remember that it is Christ that is most precious of all. And all of their efforts are, to, are for us to know Christ, to love Christ, and to give ourselves completely to him. Oh Jesus, I love you above all. And I long for you in my soul more than anything itself. And I ask you today because I cannot receive you sacramentally, that you will come spiritually into my heart 
as if you have already come, O oh God, I give myself again to you this day and desire, Lord, that all that I have, all that I am, all that I am, could be given over to you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Monica, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So remember those people who have prayed for you, who sweated. <laughs> and if they're alive, give them a call now. Just reach out to them and say thanks. Thanks today, thanks. Thanks for your sweat, your tears, your prayers, all them things, just thanks. And, and let us today just be thankful for this Holy Mother Church. But also ask yourself in your domestic church, are you that kind of prayer warrior and that kind of intercessor? Ask. And if not, you know the model and you know who to call, Monica is her name. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go glorifying the Lord with our life. Thanks be to God. If you want to see the glory